And welcome to the next in our study of women of the Bible. Uh, today we're returning to the Old Testament and to two women mentioned in both Kings and Chronicles. Only mentioned um, very briefly in a couple of verses, but two women who had a profound influence on Israel at the time. The first woman is Jehoshabeth. Jehoshabeth is also called um, Jehosheba in 2 Kings chapter 11 and verse 2. And she was Ahaziah's sister. She may have been the daughter of Athaliah, but she was more likely Jehoram's daughter by an unrecorded wife. She was the wife of Jehoiada, a true priest of God, suggesting that she herself most likely remained faithful to God. The priesthood of Jehoshebeth's husband undoubtedly made her keenly aware of the need to rescue Joash from the sword of his murderous grandmother, Athaliah. Uh, it does help to read around um, these passages in Kings and Chronicles just to get a broader sense of um, the context and the upheaval that was occurring um, during this time in Israel's history. The temple afforded Jehoshabeth uh, a place to keep the young child safe and an environment in which the boy could be prepared for future service as a king. By rescuing Joash, Jehoshabeth became God's instrument in his sovereign plan to keep his promise that a son of David would always be king and be part of the lineage of the Messiah. Presumably, this courageous woman risked her own life to save the life of an innocent child marked for murder. The second woman that we're looking at is Huldah. Huldah played a significant part in the history of Israel, although she appeared only once on the stage of the nation's history, during a time of religious defection. In Jerusalem, King Josiah of Judah initiated renewed interest in the Book of the Law, and Huldah participated in the subsequent spiritual revival. She was the wife of Shalom, who was keeper of the wardrobe possibly either royal robes and attire, or priestly garments and vestments. They lived in the second quarter, a newer section of Jerusalem, which developed as a westward or northern expansion of the old city, perhaps somewhat like a modern-day suburb. Holdar, and not Jeremiah or Zephaniah, both of whom were active as prophets during this time, was consulted when the king instructed the priests to inquire of the Lord as to the meaning of the book of the law, a scroll that had been found during the work of restoration and cleaning in the temple. It was significant that with the number of prophets Living in Jerusalem at the time, the priest Hilkiah and the rest of the king's advisers turned to a woman for a word from God. This nullifies the reasoning some use to suggest that God only uses women for such ministry when no men are available. Obviously, whether in a private audience or in the presence of the congregation, God used Huldah to bear testimony and deliver a message from him to the high priest and to the king. 2 Kings 22 verses 14 to 20 The tradition of female prophets is mentioned only sporadically in the Old Testament. But Huldah is not the only one highlighted. She is in good company with Deborah and Miriam. However, 
another female prophet, Noadiah, see Nehemiah chapter 6 and verse 14, was a false prophet and worked against the people of God. The regard for Holder's own integrity and authority as a woman of God made her validation of the recently discovered Book of the Law all that was required for immediate action on the part of the king. Her message was not her own, but from the Lord. The fact that the phrase, thus says the Lord, is repeated four times in her short prophecy emphasizes that Holder understood her responsibility and opportunity to be a channel through whom God delivered his word. Second Kings twenty two fifteen to seventeen, also verse nineteen. All the reforms set forth by King Josiah were based on the word of God as given to this woman. Holder was apparently so well known as a woman of God and so highly trusted with regard to her understanding of God's law that for a time her nation's whole religious consciousness and practice was reignited in faithfulness to God. Holder, a deeply devout woman, made her God-given spiritual gifts available to God, and she was obedient and faithful to deliver the word from God to her people. Thanks very much.